Welcome to the Capital News. I'm your host, Alex Kreitas. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. The title of today's podcast is Risk, Reward, Danger, Alert. This is a question mark, but of course, many of you probably already have your opinion on this. I know I do. Uh, from a risk-reward standpoint, I have long been very hesitant and skeptical of this market performance, this market behavior. Of course, I'm talking primarily about the stock market and even more specifically about the NASDAQ and these tech stocks that just continue to go up like it's the law, like it has, like it has been decreed that there could not be a down day in the NASDAQ. It's almost that frightening. But everybody has their own risk-reward profile, your own threshold and tolerance for risk, and that's how it's supposed to be. But when you have market valuations out the wazoo, and they've been this way, when we are in the midst of the greatest depression, when we have so many structural issues that have yet to be, to be even discussed by either one of the demented jokers on the top of their two political parties, their tickets, I mean, th what do you expect? How can anybody make heads or tails of truly what's going on here with all of the distortionary effects going on at the same time? Garbage in, garbage out. You're going to have poor data, you're going to make poor decisions. It's that simple. And people are just running to get their hands on a handful of select stocks that happen to be some of the largest companies and corporations in the world that have extremely heavy weightings when it comes to these major indexes. And they continue to drive these markets higher and higher and higher, even though the internals of the market, meaning basically all the other companies that are publicly traded, are not doing so hot. This tells you what's going on here. This tells you, this is another sign in your face of the club, of who's in it, who benefits who gets all the funny money, who gets all the benefits, and that's it. That's it. We wrote about this extensively in our book, The Cynic's Guide to Investing. The goal is consolidation. It's an oligopoly. There's just a handful of corporations pulling the strings in conjunction with our government. That's it. That's corporatism. That's fascism. It's whatever you want to call it. You can call it socialism, too. It makes no difference because the destination is the same. It's tyranny. It's control. It's poverty. It's homelessness. It's the eroding of your savings and of your purchasing power. That's what's coming. That's what's already here for a lot of people around the world. And do not think for a second that it cannot happen here in this country. Because in some places, it already is. And it will get worse. So we're going to talk market performance. Of course, there's news out today. I mean, just the, the timing of it is just beautiful. But now we might get a COVID-19 vaccine by the end of October. Perhaps even by November 1st at the latest is what we're being told. Hmm. Wonder who floated that out there. Political? Maybe? You think, th think there's any uh, political waiting behind uh, this decision to put this out there, that there could be a vaccine by the end of October or November 1st, a couple days before the presidential election? It's just, a, just a simple coincidence. I'm sure of it. The president also has to tout the stock market because the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above 29,000. And of course, the president made sure to inform everybody and their mother that that was the case. And if Joe Biden becomes president, the stock market will crash according to the president, even though it has crashed or, have had, or has had significant corrections on multiple occasions during his time in office. 
no, no, this is this will all be Joe Biden's fault, just like all of the protests and riots that are occurring under his watch are Joe Biden's America. But if you want the protests and the riots to stop, you have to reelect Donald Trump, which would mean logically. And if you have any basic language comprehension of the English language, one can reasonably deduce that when the president says that, that you have to reelect him for, for these protests and riots to stop, otherwise this is Biden's America, then that would mean, that would suggest that the president has the ability to stop them now. Because this isn't electing Donald Trump for the first time. He has already been elected. He is already the president. So that should mean that he has the authority and the power to do something about it now, but he's not. So why isn't he? Hmm. Interesting question, isn't it? just political rhetoric, folks. That's all it is. He wants reelected. That's it. He's going to tell you that there's a vaccine. That's it. He's going to tell you that this is Joe Biden's America, even though all this stuff is happening under his watch. That's it. Does it matter? I told this audience yesterday, and again, I'm just throwing this out there. I have no idea if this exists or not, but I would imagine that something like it does. That there is, for the sake of argument, as I stated yesterday, a thousand words, just a thousand words that exists for Republican strategists and Democrat strategists, and let's say it's 500 words each side, and if you can understand those 500 words and master those words and use those words in complete sentences, and and this year, I mean, you don't have to use complete sentences because we have two demented jokers at the top of the ticket who cannot speak in full sentences, so as long as they can rattle off these words, even slur them, 500 apiece, with enough gusto, with enough passion, with enough persistence and consistency, they can become president of the United States. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I say this tongue in cheek, but I'm, I'm more serious than not. Because you can come up with the words that trigger you, that make you feel a connection with Trump or with Biden or with any Republican or with any Democrat. Even the word Republican and Democrat will trigger you because something that a Republican may have said years ago, but now maybe a Democrat is saying more recently, and you would have Republicans perhaps ridiculing that Democrat because a Democrat is saying it, even though that may have been a talking point of the Republicans years ago, and you can do this in reverse. This just tells you how sick our society is. This just tells you how tribal we have become. This just tells you how siloed in everybody is. Because this is now a team sport and people are forgetting that the real team is the United States of America. But we are in social decline, political decline, and economic decline. So this should come as no surprise. But for some reason, people cannot connect these dots. For some reason, people are actually enthusiastic or believe in Donald Trump or Joe Biden. I don't get it. I can understand not liking Donald Trump, so you're going to vote for Biden, or you don't like Biden, so you're going to vote for Donald Trump. But how you can honestly be for either one of these guys is, is truly beyond me. It really is. We have a president who comes out today touting the stock market once again. We know that the top 10% own 90% of financial assets. And that becomes even more concentrated when you look at the top 1% and then the top 1% of the top 1%. Okay? We know that we have millions of Americans and the, the number that the Census Bureau throws out there is 30 million. Even if you say that that's high, and it probably is, but even if you were just to believe it, 30 million Americans are underfed. We have estimates between 30 to 40 million Americans that are facing eviction. And the administration knows the severity of this. Now, they can downplay it like we talked about yesterday with Mnuchin coming out there. Say, oh, that's, that's just completely ridiculous. The 30 to 40 million, that's just not even going to happen. Blah, 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 blah. Well, then why do you have an eviction moratorium that's kicked in on a national basis till the end of the year? Oh, that's right, because that estimate is probably in the ballpark. It's probably in the ballpark. Plus, we have an election coming up. 
It's all political expediency. It's, it's as if the president just does not understand the severity or the reality of what's going on around this country. To come out and tout the stock market when most people don't own stocks, or especially not in a large enough number within their portfolio where it really makes a difference to their lives. That's what he wants to tout when people are actually suffering in the streets and there is so much waiting in the wings that is going to collapse. It's going to. And if it doesn't, then we don't have to pay taxes anymore and we don't have to pay our bills anymore because the printing press is the panacea. And if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. So if they can bail out corporation after corporation after corporation, if they can bail out one government after the next, then they can bail us out too. And we can just rid ourselves of all of our personal responsibility too. Because the corporations, they have no responsibility. The government, long gone, has no responsibility whatsoever. So why us? Why should we have to continue to pay everybody else's bills? Just turn on the printing press. Instead of buying 50 billion bonds, make it 100 billion, make it 300, make it a trillion every month. It makes no difference. There's no negative consequences or side effects. That's the rational conclusion of this argument. And it sounds crazy, and that's because it is, folks. But this is the argument that the government and the Federal Reserve and other central banks are pushing. Turn the printing press on. Presto, you're good to go. You're good to go. And I would be very curious to know what pharmaceutical company do you think is going to get the green light to have this very, very rapid vaccine approved? Do you think there's going to be some insider trading around this one? Do you, do you think Donnie Boy and Donnie Jr. and Ivanka and Jared and all his other cronies, you think, you think they got the inside track as to uh, what company is going to be green-lighted for this? Hmm. I wonder about the fraud that is going to exist around this. I wonder what kind of shenanigans are going to take place in the markets following this announcement. Because if you remember last week during the RNC circus, Mike Pence said a... a, a Vaccine was likely going to be here by the end of the year. I think some others have made similar comments at the end of the year. And then, of course, Thunderthumb gets up there on Thursday evening. And he says, yeah, well, there could be a vaccine even sooner than that. Well, I bet there's going to be an announcement that there's a vaccine sooner than that because the president doesn't give a damn if it's true or not. All he wants to do is juice the markets. We, we, and we have nothing, again, but history and evidence of this. We had this same song and dance for a year and a half with the U.S.-China trade talks going to be the best deal ever. All we got is phase one, and it was nothing. It was nothing. Now, you can give the president credit for trying, but it didn't happen. And in the interim, there was a lot of damage done. Tariffs were put on. There's basically a trade war. We basically have a cold war now going on with China. And I'm no defender of China, but there was a lot of collateral damage done, which is real damage because a lot of farmers lost their farms, lost their business. And, and consumers had to pay higher prices because of the tariffs. I don't care what the president and what his idiot advisor, Peter Navarro, comes out and tells you about how tariffs work. It's a bunch of lies. It's a bunch of BS. All right? Don't fall for it. Don't believe it. But that's it. As long as the Dow was up 29,000 point, you know, up 29,000, closed up 29,000 for the first time ever, then I guess everything's perfectly okay. And, of course, it isn't. Some other news that we got out from ADP, the jobs report, and again... I do not like the ADP jobs report. I have made this known to this audience since this podcast has been online for over a year. I do not like the ADP jobs report, and I rarely discuss it. But I just want to throw out their number that came out today. Private payrolls added 428,000 jobs for the month of August. Well below market expectations, which were nearly, nearly double that number. So not even close, the ADP number. And again, one of the main reasons why I do not like the ADP number, well, just a couple months ago, they really showed their true colors when they had that massive revision where they were basically trying to fix their number 
to get closer to the quote-unquote official jobs report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is going to come out this Friday because ADP was so far off, but they were probably the more accurate number at the time because their number was so low. And then we got that huge number from the government, which was a bunch of BS. So that just tells you the game that's being played by ADP. But they are not the government. They are not the official number. That's why I do not like to talk about them. But 428,000, we're going to see tomorrow with the Thursday data dump. Of course, we'll have that discussion, initial claims, continuing claims. The total number with everybody, last week it was at 27 million. We'll see what that comes to that, uh, tomorrow. Uh, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet, and we'll have uh, M2 money stock as well. And then Friday, we will do the jobs report. We will read that in its entirety, as we have been over the past several months during this pandemic because they have been historic. And I think it's good for the audience to get the entire picture, not just the headlines, not just what Fox News or MSNBC or CNBC wants you to hear. I want you to hear the whole thing. Okay, so that's what we're going to do on Friday. Another reason why I'm bringing up risk-reward danger alert today as today's podcast title is because yesterday, Apple the company, their market cap was larger than the entirety of the Russell 2000. Allow me to repeat that. Apple's market cap yesterday was larger than the entirety of the Russell 2000. Now, if you think this is sustainable, Godspeed. Go ahead. Good luck. I don't. This is just another sign that something is broken, that something is very, very wrong. Something else that is giving me pause as well with something that I think is a foreshock, and this goes to our volatility model, but this is now looking at the VIX, which is the volatility of the S&P 500, where one would think that the VIX would be trading at a much lower level given this massive rebound in the S&P 500 over the past several months. It's trading, the VIX is trading at 26 points and change. I believe earlier this year, before the major market collapse, the VIX was at what, 12, 13, 14 points? We're back at those levels, at those all-time highs, and we've even exceeded them. So one would think that the VIX would be closer to those levels. Well, it's not. And what's even more concerning to me is how the S&P 500 had a strong day, but so did the VIX. Because the way that the VIX is typically moves and typically correlates with the S&P 500 is that if the S&P 500 goes up, the VIX goes down. Because this is not volatility in any direction, meaning a 1% to the upside and a 1% to the downside would be the same thing. In my opinion, that's how it should work because that's volatility. 1% is 1%. What do I care what difference it is? But for the purposes of how the VIX is typically correlated and typically calculated with this, volatility, the, vol the VIX is only going to go up if the S&P goes down. So the fact that we have the S&P 500 having a strong day, but also the VIX having a strong day is concerning to me because to me, this is a sign of a foreshock that something is broken. No, you know what, Sherlock, of course something's broken, but this dam is about to give way and look out on the other side. Now, I could be 100% wrong on this, but this is just another breakdown, another dislocation of a typical correlation. And we've been talking about this at length. I've been warning this audience about this coming to fruition months and months and months ago, I, before COVID-19. That when this everything bubble bursts, because of the massive amounts 
of distortions and dislocations and malinvestments within the global economy. Things were just going to go haywire. What typically correlates positively with each other, you know, with with typical uh, economic and financial variables are, are now going to have a negative correlation and vice versa. This is one of those things. Now, we'll see if this is a one-off or if this is going to continue. But to me, this is very much a foreshock of more volatility coming. And if there's more volatility coming, that typically coincides with a market sell-off. The question is going to be, obviously, what degree, what duration. And don't forget, Donald Trump has a pretty good track record of picking tops. Him and his sons go out there, they text, they tweet about the stock market, and shortly thereafter, there's sometimes uh, some pretty nasty corrections. Not all the time, but there have been a few on occasion. This is somewhat off topic, <clears throat> um, but still, obviously, with the political season and, and, and the discussion that we're going to be having here in the not-too-distant future is obviously a look at the electoral college map, and I've been playing around with, with some projections, and uh, there are some potential doozies. Uh, and with this being the year 2020, uh, I'm not going to be surprised if we get one of these doozies, which could actually create a tie in the Electoral College at 269 electoral votes each, because you need 270 to win. If that happens, and we'll talk about that scenario down the road here, 269 each, an electoral tie, the vote would go to the House of Representatives for the presidency. And then the vice presidency goes to the Senate. Because the vice president is actually the president of the Senate. So that's how that would be broken down. And of course, the Democrats control the House and the Republicans control the Senate. So in that scenario, you could have a President Joe Biden with a vice president, Mike Pence. Don't count that out. This is the year 2020, but there's a lot of other scenarios that could uh, come to fruition. Uh, I'm probably going to hold off on that discussion until we at least have the first debate between uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Uh, and I think, I, I don't quote me on this, but I think I've come across, uh, you know, an article or something a couple weeks ago or whatever, that the first one, I believe, is scheduled for sometime this month in September. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the case. And of course, you have crazy Nancy Pelosi out there talking about, well, we shouldn't even have uh, debates, that you shouldn't even dignify a debate with this president, blah, 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 blah. I mean, get, come on, Nancy. Sit down and shut up. I'm, I'm so sick and tired of all of these people. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. This is going to be a national embarrassment. This is going to be a national disgrace when Tweedledee and Tweedledum are up there uh, blabbering, uh, run on sentences, can't finish their thoughts. I mean, have a drinking game, and when they all say when they say a certain word or they can't finish their thought, I mean, you're going to be drunk within the first 20 minutes. Make no mistake about this. Uh, but it's going to be interesting television, I guess. It's, it's some form of entertainment. Uh, because you still can't go out and do a lot of things. So I guess it's going to be entertaining. I guess that's the positive spin. You know, if, if the Titanic's going down, yeah, pull up a chair and play the violin. You might as well do something. But that's what it's going to be. But I'm going to wait uh, until that first debate because it's really going to come down to the debates uh, with a lot of people might, you know, because it's it's middle America. It's the independents and those on the fence who are going to determine this election, which is typically the case. Uh, neither one of these idiots has, has earned my respect or has earned my vote, so neither of them are going to get it. Uh, so it's just a question of what third-party candidate am I going to vote for, most likely the Libertarian, or I'm just going to stay home. Th that's pretty much the option. I cannot endorse this behavior. I cannot endorse more of these actions from either of these candidates. I'm just not going to do it. Um, but hey, Free country, you vote for who you want to do. But uh, I, just, I, I just don't see it with either of these guys. On to some market performance to round out the day. The dollar index had a nice day. Dollar index trading at 92 spot 83. 
The euro to the dollar is down at $1.18. Again, not too long ago, it was $1.20, so that's quite a move. British pound is at $1.33 to the U.S. dollar. Australian to the U.S. dollar is at $0.73. Cents. Stock market front overnight futures trading. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is flat, as is the S&P 500. The NASDAQ 100 is down about one quarter of 1%. Japanese cash trade is up one25 2.5%. A strong day across the pond in Europe. The FTSE market up 1.35%. German market up 2. Point, I'm sorry, 2%. French markets up 1.9%. Italy up 0.8. And the Spanish markets up 0.6% for the day. Cash trade in Australia up 8 tenths of 1%. And of course, this is on the back of the news yesterday that they are officially in recession the first time in 30 years. And of course, yesterday during the cash trade, the Australian markets were up nearly 2% at the time of our podcast. And again, they are up currently an additional 8 tenths of 1%. Bad news is great news around the world because we got printing presses. That's all you got to do. Could there be a sign of some two-way price discovery finally? Because Apple is down two percentage points for the day. Tesla gave back another 5.8%. Eh, I don't know. Is, it really, is there really two-way price discovery in these markets? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think a couple days makes a trend. So we're going to have to wait and continue to monitor this because Apple and Tesla are basically the stock market. Uh, given a little bit back, but uh, we'll, we'll, see how long, we'll see how long this lasts. On the commodity front, we have WTI trading at $41.58 a barrel, Brent at $44.44, natural gas at $2.49. Gold and silver took a licking today, but right now market is trading up slightly. Gold spot price at $1,946 an ounce, silver spot $27.58 an ounce. Uncle Sam's 10-year U.S. Treasury junk note is yielding 0.66%. So that's some of your market performance, ladies and gentlemen, around the horn. Again, tomorrow is Thursday, so we will have our typical discussion, initial jobless claims, continuing claims, the whole lot of it. Federal Reserve's balance sheet, money stock, and we'll see if there's any murmurs, uh, any further uh, discussion on this, you know, miraculous uh, COVID-19 Operation Warp Speed vaccine that's going to be coming to fruition uh, to a theater near you to an to a shoulder near you, or maybe they're going to stick it in your rear end, I guess, wherever you want it. Uh, and you might have to get it twice. That's what we're being told. I've heard that from uh, Bill Gates and others. You know, Bill Gates, the uh, the vaccine man. Uh, one dose might not be enough. Uh, and of course, and of course, these pharmaceutical companies, uh, you know, who, whichever one it is, or ones, plural, that it is that are going to get this approval, their stocks are going to go through the roof, at least temporarily. I'm sure the executives will cash out. And if it turns out that this is not a safe vaccine, which it probably won't be, uh, you, you can't sue them. You, you cannot sue the pharmaceutical companies. You get sick or someone you know dies, you can't sue them. They can't win. They can't lose. They cannot lose. And typically, a vaccine takes years. They're going to get this thing done in several months. I don't think so. Risk-reward? It's not just about stocks, folks. It's about vaccines and what they're trying to put inside of your body. People don't even want to wear masks. You think they're going to inject themselves with this stuff? I don't think so. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capital News. I am Alex Caritas. Godspeed.